Hello, hello. Happy Thursday, E-Rankers. It's our usual Thursday Q&A um, with Starla and Pam. If this is your first time, welcome and feel free to ask all your E-Rank and EC related questions in the chat. Um, if you're catching this on the replay on YouTube, there will be a link down below to how you can join our Facebook group to actually get involved in this when it's live and ask your questions. Uh, yeah, so it's our it's our last it's our last one before Easter. So happy Easter, everybody! Um, and Starla, do we have any updates for this week? We do have updates. Let's let's see how long Starla can keep these views <laughs> on her head. And we've we've noted that Pam is a festive Easter mouse. Uh, it Not, was a rat, wasn't it? <laughs> I was going to say festive Easter rat, but I thought some Disney-like fanatic in the comments might get mad at me for being <laughs> rude to poor Mickey. Um, let's see. Okay, so a couple things from Anthony that he wants us to remind you of. Um, the first thing, and, and it's probably the most common problem that we've been seeing lately, is that we've got you know, maybe maybe you're new to E-Rank and you just aren't familiar with the refresh data button or you go in and you make some changes to your listings or you add a new listing to your shop and you're ready to kind of do a little bit of investigative research. But E-Rank is telling you that you haven't added a listing and you your number of listings is not matching up with the number of listings in your Etsy shop. The likely problem is that you have not hit the refresh data button. And we've had a lot of sellers who will come to us and say, oh, I did refresh. But they didn't. They hit the refresh button on their browser and refresh the page. What we're talking about is the orange refresh data button that is located at the top right hand corner of your E-Rank screen. Um, I believe that you also get a pop up when you land on your dashboard once you've logged in for the first time. We're trying to work around like a fix to make it a, a little bit more obvious that you need to click that button pretty much every time you want to look at the listings that you have. Pam and I were just talking about how if we're just hopping in to do a little bit of keyword research and we just want to look something up real quick, we usually don't hit the refresh data button um, just because we don't need updates on our actual listings if we're just popping in to look something up real quick. But if you're planning on doing some major uh, tweaking and research on your shop with your listings, you need to hit that refresh data button because E-Rank does not constantly pull data from your Etsy shop. We do that when you hit that button because if we were doing it 24-7, E-Rank would... Oh, have we lost Starla for a minute? Um, yeah. Oh, uh -oh. she's back again. <laughs> You're back again. The bunny, oh. the bunny paused for a minute, that's all. Oh, what did, what did we miss? Uh, I, I basically you right last three slow. words. Yeah, <laughs> Your no. last, yeah. That's that's it. Basically, it, if if it was draw, if it would pull in that data from Etsy all the time, then the site would would be running super slow. So, yes. If you've done, if you've made any changes in Etsy and you want them recognized in your shop, hit the big bright orange refresh data button. Basically. Yes. And then the, the last few things that he wanted us to point out is that the March data will be available on Tuesday. So get excited for that. Uh, maybe set yourself a little Google reminder or something to go in on Tuesday and check out what was trending in March because that's always a really exciting day to see what those spring trends are going to be. I think that once you start seeing trends emerge in March, you can usually expect to see them in April uh, and May as well. But, you know, keeping in mind that if you notice that a lot of Easter keywords are trending, you're probably not going to have time to list anything. <laughs> um, let's see. And then the, uh, the last thing is that next month we're going to be upgrading the keyword tool and the trend buzz report, which will be uh, switching them to rapid updates. And that basically means that the data will be updated on the first of the new month. So faster data, in short, if you didn't understand all that mumbo jumbo, faster, 
fast. Yeah. Better, oh. faster. faster better. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking for, forward to that. I can't imagine how how our, our little e rang elves are going to be working a way to get all that data up super fast. But awesome news. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's go ahead and dip to the comments. Amber Marie said, copyright infringement, copyright infringement. Yeah. We're not selling anything right now. <laughs> we can wear, that would be like if I was wearing a Disney t-shirt. Yeah, I'm I'm allowed I'm allowed to wear the ears. Yeah. Also, I'm not entirely sure where I bought them from. I think I got them from eBay. So they're probably copyright infringement. You're quite right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the seller's problem, right? <laughs> exactly. I'm allowed to wear them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, Amber had said, I think it's not obvious because if if you do click refresh, nothing on the main front page changes at all. Uh, you sh well, should. sometimes um, if you've made a change, then you should see things like your number of listings update. Yep. Um, those basic things should, but but yeah, um, good point. There might be something else that we can add. It does, if I'm remembering right, does it say the, the last time that you, we refreshed? I think it does. Um, but maybe we could have something a bit more obvious on the front page. So yeah, thanks for the idea. Yeah, like last refresh date. Yep. That, that might be a good idea. We should pass that along to Anthony. Um, okay, so let's get into questions. Jessica is our first. I know that I can't use copyright or trademark names and tags and titles, but is it okay to use a company name in materials? I make scrunchies and I want to put the brand of elastics I use because they're known for quality. That's a really good question because if somebody's using something like, you know, uh, a specific like Swarovski crystals, I put those in my materials um, because that's what they are. It depends on the company. Company. I've heard some companies you would have to set up as a production partner with them. They have to approve you. I believe things like Harris Tweed have have things that you have. If you've got a certain, if you use a certain amount of their materials in it, then you have the right to use their label. If you don't, you don't. So it depends. Um, I would possibly contact the company if... Because if they're a brand of elastics that's known for their quality, then their brand is quality and they might not want associated with someone who isn't quality. So they might have rules in place. I'm not saying you're, I'm sure you are quality, but some some companies obviously are very big on holding on to that, that name that they have. So I would check with them. But mainly, yeah, like I think Swiss Cross, I can't say it, the, those crystals, they were certainly, they were okay. They were well aware that they were selling supplies for what people were doing. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think that any company that you're sourcing supplies from, they probably have a contact email address. Um, or if, if specifically, if they have a legal team, I would reach out to them and, and just ask because it probably only take a few minutes to do so. And and you can save yourself later trouble in the event that, you know, they don't want you to. So exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next up, we have Elena. The keywords that best describe my products, scarves, are Nuno felted, Nuno felt, but they are not searched for. What's your advice? Should I omit these technique related terms and look for a broader keywords or keep them and aim for buyers specifically looking for such an item or a combination of both. I've never heard that term before. In my I, life. That's, I know what it is because I'm a felter and I've done new, new felting, but Starless just answered your question perfectly. People who don't new, new felt don't know what it is. It's a beautiful process that makes wispy, floaty, like felted, but light floaty scarves and things. It is absolutely lovely. It is blooming hard work I've done it <laughs> um but yeah people won't generally be looking for the process they'll be looking for what it is what the feeling of your thing is is it floaty whimsical I don't, I'm making up words but you know what kind of item is it is it warm is it for you know luxury when you're dressing somewhere to go fancy those kind of things um you're, you're quite right like no new felt it is it describes it to people who understand how to make the process, but most people who know how to make it aren't buying it. So, 
Yeah, uh, and I'm also, I'm assuming that the products using this technique probably look different than if I were to go to a shop that's just selling a knit scarf. So the fact that your photos are going to be different, that should be enough reason to stand out on a search page. Um, I would make sure that your photos are phenomenal and show the details of your product. And then you don't need to get so far into the specifics of the materials or the process because ultimately I don't care as a buyer um, how it's made. And if I do, I'll look in the about section or I'll, I'll search the description for that. But typically I just want the thing. And if the thing is really expensive, I'll look at the description and I'll try to figure out why the thing is so expensive so I can validate that price point. Um, but like I said, in most cases, I just want the thing and I'm just going to search for the thing that I want. And anybody who searches. Yep. Oh, Starless dipping out again. That very it's probably a competitor. Just oh no, uh, she's back. <laughs> Am I gone? Uh, yeah, <laughs> apparently, apparently, Facebook's cutting out all your all your best comments by the looks of it. Ah, uh, now it says my connection's good. It said my connection was bad. Um, but yeah, yeah I, it sounds like something that only somebody who is a, a potential competitor. <laughs> would be searching yeah so. yes and that's something we get not exactly when Nunu felt but hopefully that'll help a lot of other people as well we get this kind of question a lot people saying this is what I make but nobody's searching for it like is there something wrong with the keyword explorer and it's not what it is is there's there's something wrong with how you're thinking about how people search. They don't search for how things are made. They search for what they're wanting. So if they're looking for a beautiful scarf in blues that they can wear with their fancy going out dress, they, they probably don't know what a new, new felted scarf is. But when they search and they see your gorgeous pictures, because new, new felting is beautiful. So <laughs> you should stand out in the search page. Yeah, they, they don't know they need it until they see it. Yep. <laughs> All right. Amber says, Starla, Pam, Anthony, Debbie, anyone from the team, <laughs> is there a way to have uh, an Etsy Instagram feed and Facebook feed to show what the most recently shared images was on their social media so that we can see what Etsy are most loving right now? Oh, within E-Rank? Like, like a <laughs> pulling their feed? That could be interesting, yeah. That's a good idea too. You know what? I'm gonna put um I'm gonna send myself a little message. What was the other thing? We wanted to do Instagram feed and um, a note on the dashboard to say that we've refreshed. Got it. Okay. Lots you of notes. No easy keyboard in the world, do you know that? <laughs> I and you know what's funny is I just we just had Amber buy the exact same one and she said the exact same thing. It's <laughs> very loud gaming keyboard. Um, let's see. Okay. Oop, where'd you go, Christina? There you are. Christina, question. What is a decent conversion rate for an Etsy ad campaign? I ran my first ad on a couple of Easter items towards the end of February through the end of March. I've been playing around with the ROI calculator on E-Rank, and I just want to make sure that I'm being careful with my ad budget. My conversion rate was 3.448% with a click-through rate of 1.44%. I have no idea, but I would assume that it's the same as when you look at conversion rates for, for niches where it just depends on the product, right? Yeah, it's going to vary. But, oh, it's a kind of weird one because Etsy just let us know how their algorithm for ads works. And it's very interesting. And... The higher converting your items are, the higher your click your um, cost per click is going to be, which is weird. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it's certainly making me rethink about how I'm doing ad campaigns. But yeah, I would say average for retail for online retail is considered somewhere about two percent but it depends what you make where you're being seen what time of the day what time of the year the cost of your items so that's that's your conversion and click-through rate that you have for your items just now there's that we can't compare them to everybody else really yeah 
Yeah, don't sit still, Stella. I was thinking she's she frozen again. <laughs> Don't no, I'm, I'm I'm skimming for the very best comments. I'm I'm creating for you a delicious soup of wonderful comments from our lovely viewers. We actually don't have a lot of questions today, so get those questions in here. Get the questions in, come on! It's your chance to ask the team what's the, those pressing questions. Yes, the lovely festive Easter rat and the way to pastel Easter bunny. This is your chance, guys. <laughs> um, Elena said, don't you, Pam, use felt in your listings? It is specific, too. Um, I think that it is way less. I know what felt is. I have no idea what new, new, new felt <laughs> is. I know what felt is. Yeah, I do use needle felt in my listings um, because people are starting to understand what that is. I made the same mistake when I started in 2008. I put all my eggs in the needle felted basket. Um, I, I hit all my keywords for that when nobody knew what needle felted was. I have needle felted there. It does bring some views and sales for me. But I find other keywords are much better. Cat lovers, gift, um, or specific breeds of dog and cat work much better for me because people, it, it's like what Starla says, you, you don't know you want it till you see it. But if someone has a Border Collie and my item shows up in Border Collies, then they're like, yeah, that was, that was the kind of thing I wanted, but I didn't know that it was a needle felted kind of thing. So... Yeah, um, we do kind of say don't <laughs> listen to what I say, not what I do as well. My shop is so old, it's driving a lot of views from social media and everything. So my tags and everything aren't the best in the whole world, but I'm not touching them because everything's working as I want just now. Yeah. Let's see. Um, Elena said... Uh, Spotted on Etsy is an indicator of how good your SEO is. Is it better to have many appearances of the same listing for different keywords or more listings appearing just once? I don't have the same listing appearing for a lot of different keywords. It's usually like one and then it ranks really high. What about you, Pam? Yeah, it varies i've seen some people that that spaghetti on that graph is quite impressive they've got lots of things but it it doesn't it's not about so much getting loads it's about getting the right ones um because as anthony said a few a few weeks ago a couple of months ago you know you could put in random words that are gibberish and you'll show up for spotted on etsy but if no one's searching for it doesn't matter at all so it's better to have one or two keywords showing up for that one or two listings showing up for that superstar keyword rather than trying to have 400 items spotted for stuff that no one's searching for yeah you could if you went and put like like i often use this example floop de doop de dee da in all of your tags and titles you are gonna dominate the keyword space for floop de doop de dee da but if you go on to E-Rank and search for floop de doop de dee da I can almost bet that nobody is searching for it. I mean, you know, there might be a new trend. Yeah, they are now. <laughs> yeah, now, now <laughs> like now, trend. <laughs> we've created a revolution. And um, I got the fright of my life because I've always been using the, what is it, um, bronze and opal steampunk engagement ring. And then once I searched and someone had made one, <laughs> Seriously, yeah. this was not a keyword I was using as a good example, guys. Don't copy me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. It's very cool, though. <laughs> Wendy said, as Pam has pointed out in her videos, Etsy ads are all messed up. I had a jewelry item, a necklace, shown in ads for the search short hairstyle lair women <laughs> because I had the tag layering necklace and also shown for the search 24 inch long rectangular planter because the title had 24 inch long necklace. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, I'm seeing, I, I switched my ads back on just now to do a little bit of maths for everybody. And I'm seeing some really interesting things coming back um certainly like pdf tutorial when my items are physical product and things like you're just 
just throw in la random stuff. I'm hoping that it means not many people are advertising, so they had nothing to show. That would be good. But, <laughs> but yeah, it's it, it's a learning algorithm, and it's got a bit of learning to do. It's it's a baby. It's a baby yeah. algorithm. It hasn't <laughs> learned. It hasn't learned how to how to algorithm yet. <laughs> <laughs> exactly so that's it we just have to tell tell the naughty algorithm off or if you're getting lots of views for things that are completely irrelevant message Etsy I have heard of people get some of their ad money back when they were being shown for completely irrelevant things because yeah at the end of the day you don't want to pay for clicks on things that people aren't going to buy because they weren't looking for anything like what your item is so Absolutely. And uh, Amber said, I searched for it once to make a point during a live. What floop, floop dee doop dee yeah, no, da? Don't, don't read her comment until she prints, till, she'll, till she types out the whole word. Floop, floop <laughs> dee doop dee dee da. <laughs> well, All right, guys. Be sure to get some questions in. You still have us for, man, you've got us for like another 40-ish minutes. And uh, for those who aren't aware, Debbie, our lovely Debbie, types out everything from these Q&As. That way, if you missed a note or there was something that you want to go back uh, and look a little further into, or if you just don't want to take your own notes and you want Debbie to do it for you, she's doing that right now. So she might be typing everything I'm saying right now. Who knows? She had to type out floop de doop de dee da a bunch of times too, didn't she? Debbie, you don't have to type this out. Just <laughs> <laughs> put a shortcut button for that. <laughs> but um, you guys can get those notes in the file section of the group. You can also go back and get the notes from the past Q&As as well. And those are typically posted within the hour of the Q&A session ending. So, all right. I hear an echo. Are, am I echoing? Uh, you're fine just now. Okay. Let's see. All right. Um, Elena, is that where we're at? Yes. Elena said, how can I see in which listings of mine a certain keyword exists? Oh, like a filtering process to see what. Oh, in which, yes, you can do that with, oh, what's the tool? <laughs> Oh, I'm um, right. Hang on. If it's I fine. break stuff, um, we do have a tool on eRank for that. Um, if I can actually, sit. Oh, it's not wanting to log me in just now. Um, Debbie, what is it? You know what it is. <laughs> we know yeah, that you know. Um, but yes, you definitely can. I'm sure that you can. Unfortunately, I can't log into eRank just now and still keep this running keep keep driving the the live stream and log into everything it, it'll come to me like randomly we'll be talking about chocolate or something and i'll yell out a random word um here right checker uh yes you'd be able to find it in the rank checker if you're ranking for things um but if you're not ranking, it would need to be pulling all all listings. Um, if you go into the tag report, you would be able to search for keywords in that, and that would show up. Um, but there is something else I'm forgetting. Um, <laughs> It'll I'll, come I'll, to her. Yeah, I'll check and I'll, I'll post in the group later when I remember properly. Um, Oh, see, I'm I'm in E rank just now, and it's asking me to refresh. Not just now. Yeah. <laughs> not now, E rank. <laughs> Samantha said, "I've not done Etsy ads for about eighteen months. It's SEO all the way. SEO and a good funnel." Absolutely. Which, yeah. Samantha's an HAA, so she knows that. <laughs> uh, Agnita said, "I have a friend that wants my help with a shop. Uh, she's not so good with technology, but she wants to sell on Etsy." But the problem is that she's in another country. So that means I cannot join the shop and fix some things for her or just take care of an admin of it. I have no idea how to help her with uh, no logged into her shop. I'm afraid that may, oh, that it might get their shops both suspended. 
Um, I was doing a little bit of research on this recently because I am working on another shop with Amber Marie, who is down in the comments. And Amber's in the UK and I'm in the US. Um, the problem really arises when and if one of you guys does something wrong. That That's what's going to signal to Etsy because there are plenty of Etsy shops that have virtual assistants. And Etsy, I think, has a, I read an article that I believe was direct from Etsy where they talk about, like, it, you can have a virtual assistant, but it's, like, at your own risk because there's no way to make moderator accounts for your Etsy shop. Um, what they don't want is you to violate their rules and then try to go make a new shop and get away with it. So they just kind of disconnect or shut down all of the shops associated with that IP. Um, so what I would do is make sure that your friend is very clear on the Etsy rules. If you're going to work together, make sure that there are no violations of Etsy's rules. And if you're worried that your friend is going to, you know, do something that could get both of your shops shut down, then you may just have to find a different way to help them. Uh, because ultimately, you, once you log in with your IP, Etsy's going to kind of associate those shops together, which like I said, it, it, it should be fine if you're genuinely helping each other. Um, we really advise against using, for example, an SEO service that logs into your Etsy shop and does your SEO for you that, you know, works with a hundred other sellers, because if one of those hundred other sellers gets shut down for copyright infringement, because they were all linked back to that SEO expert that you hired, all of those shops have the potential to get shut down. And that has nothing to do with you. So just be careful and make sure that your friend knows Etsy's rules. Yeah, it's not an automatic, but make sure you trust her. The other thing you can you can help her without necessarily being logged into her account. If she's in a different country, I assume you're getting together to talk on Zoom or something. She can share her screen. You can share your screen. You can talk yeah. each other through things without being logged in. Depends how much you how much you trust her not to get her shop shut down. Really. Yeah, and I mean. I if your business is your livelihood, you could never be too careful. So exactly. that's a good way to ruin a friendship, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Christina said, not a question, but whoever came up with the E-Rank shortcut button deserves a high five. I always thought that it was just a shortcut to get to E-Rank. I didn't realize that it was a button to research listings. Yes, you can you can install the little smiley face right in your browser. And if you're shopping on Etsy and you find a really cool shop, but you want to snoop, <laughs> you can hit that button and snoop a little bit. And Pam, that also works on Amazon, doesn't it? Um, it did. Oh. It, 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 I think it still does. I have to have to check and see. Um, Amazon.com, not Amazon.co.uk or anything. But practically when you're on Etsy, try in different pages and hit the little, we call it the super spy button um, because it's a bit of fun. But try and, because different pages do different things. So a, a few examples are if you're on a shop and you hit the super spy button, that'll take you into some data on that shop. Depending, I think you might have to have a subscription level to be able to see that data. If you're on a specific listing, that'll take you to the listing audit for that listing. And also, if you're on a search page, if you've just searched for a search term and you want to know some details there, try the super spy button from there. So it takes you from different different pages. It'll take you and do different things. It's, it's very magic. Yes. I think actually we do have a video on the YouTube channel on the shortcut button um, if you want to see most of what it does. I won't say all of what it does because I still learn some, like Anthony's always sneaking extras into surprises. And sometimes we don't know until those those extras are, are already are already <laughs> extraing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, Linda said, is there a star next to repeat customer names? Not seeing it. There used to be. Pam, is it still there? Oh, good question. Um, I didn't know that it's, I don't have an Etsy page open just now. Um, I didn't know that it was taken away. Um, that's it. that's good information to have, is mm -hmm. if you're 
Hmm. It's definitely still there in the conversations because I saw, you know, it, the side if you're in conversations, it'll it'll link to past orders in there. Um, Does anybody have their Etsy shops open right now that could could go check somebody who knows that they have a repeat order? That way we don't risk uh, destroying the stream and crashing anything. Feel free to <laughs> let us know. Um, Okay, we'll we'll get back to that one. Wendy said suggestions for E rank at, uh, or E rank add-ons. How about inventory and a table format for calculating profit for each item in inventory? Hmm, is that something? Are we able? Yeah, I think that we could do that, right? Uh, yeah, we do pull down the inventory, so yeah, we possibly could. Let's certainly mention it to Anthony. It's yeah, <laughs> I, I've just added it to my list. <laughs> cool, it's on the list. Oh, he's going to be so pleased. <laughs> Here we go. Here's a load of things you've got to make. <laughs> All these things. Get to work. <laughs> yeah. well, we um, really appreciate knowing how you all use the tools to yes. how, how we can make them better. We can't always do everything. And some some of your ideas, if you've given us ideas in the past, we've not forgotten. There are some that are in the works, but other things come in and are like bigger projects so some things you might have asked for a while ago that might take a bit of time to trickle through but oh man you guys would cry if you saw my my list of things the 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 scary list of things because anytime we start working on one new thing we usually have to develop 10 new things to accommodate that one new thing and then it turns into a much bigger project but there are lots of things but i just added all your little because the little things that you just mentioned like like the reminding you to you know when you last refreshed and things like that that sounds like quick fixes so those might be some some easy wins for our development team so all right angela said what's your advice on repeating your exact tags in the title word or in the title word for word and stuffing it put as many in there or short or shoot for one to two keyword phrases that you want to exact match in titles and keywords and go for a broad match on a variety of different words. So no matching in the title and keywords. Also, are attributes and categories seen as keywords themselves, aka words that you do not have to repeat in your tags? Example, stud earrings is the stub category, and also jewelry and earrings are the things that you don't have to put in your 13 tags. So we'll we'll do these in order. What's your advice on repeating your exact tags in the title word or in the title word for word and stuffing it? Um words in your title should be in your tags, but not all words in your tags need to be in your title. Um, I think Pam and I kind of structure our titles differently, but you also have to consider um, things like what you've already ranked for and shown like a little bit of authority in, in the past. So, I'm not always a, the best example for a new seller when it comes to this because I keyword stuff the heck out of my titles. I do it old school style because that's what works. That's what's always worked for me. And I've tried using the shorter, more descriptive titles and that resulted in less visibility for those listings because I think I've got a little bit of authority on the Etsy platform. Um, Pam, you use shorter titles though, right? Um. No, I advise shorter titles. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, what Starla is saying is, is quite right. She has a lot of ranking authority, and that's why some of my listings as well have keyword stuffed titles because they've been around for a while. They've got a great sort of selling history with, with Eatsy, so Eatsy understands them. I've done a little bit research in my test shop, and basically there is a slight advantage... How I had it explained to me many years ago is a cool when you have so much ranking power, it's like a big pile of chips to bet on. I want to rank for things. So if you put one keyword in your title, all your chips go on that keyword. You go to Etsy, right, I want to rank for this one thing. If you put three keywords in your title, then you're sp you're spreading your bet. You're putting your chips in three different places. Now, if you're like Starla and you're sitting on a massive pile of chips, she can spread them out over loads of different keywords. She will rank for all of these. So she'll get seen for a lot more things. She'll get a lot more views. If you're not ranking for something, you maybe want to 
sorry, hitting the mic with a hand clap. <laughs> you maybe want to pull pull out some of the keywords that aren't working for you and put all your bets on one or two keywords to get the chance to rank for them, to get the chance to start getting the sales. But obviously your chance of views will be less because you're being seen for less um, is, is how I've seen it. Um, so there's no penalty like Eatsy don't go oh Starla's stuffing her keywords we're going to stop showing her shop <laughs> um but it, it's just if you're not ranking then maybe you want to focus in a bit more if you're ranking really easily if you've got that massive pile of chips spread spread your bet over a few keywords yeah and and, and always split test try it for yourself um see what works best for you over the course of a of a two to three months, I would say, uh, track those listings in the change tracker tool on E-Rank and see how they compare and then use whatever listing is doing the best almost as the example for the rest of your shop. Because if you're in a, in a very, very small niche with not a lot of competition, you could probably do whatever the heck you wanted. And, you know, as long as people were searching for what you're selling, you would be fine. But when we're talking about these, these highly competitive niches, you probably don't have as much authority as some of your, or as some of your big competitors, unless you have a lot of sales, you've been around for a while and you've got a lot of good reviews because Etsy can't find you credible if they don't know a whole lot about you and they learn about you by looking at things like your good reviews and like your sales because ultimately that's what they use to decide whether you're a quality seller who people want to buy from so um and, and then you also had said um also are attributes and categories seen as keywords themselves so etsy tells us that attributes are not the same as tags but they are viewed in a similar way and that we do not have to repeat our attributes in our tags but when it comes to those superstar keywords that pam and i talk about the things that you absolutely want to rank for for example if you're selling a sterling silver necklace yeah you might have silver already covered in your attributes but that's what your product is it is a sterling silver necklace so that's one that i would definitely still try to fit in your tags um you just don't have to if you if you have so much space in your tags and you need to fill out all of your tags then it's not going to hurt you to repeat them it's just if you if you have plenty of tag ideas and you're hurting for the space you don't have to stick those in there if you don't want to so yep Etsy does actually give us this a similar example to this in the ultimate guide in the handbook and basically they're saying if I can't remember the exact thing but they're saying if one of your attributes or something is the word ring you wouldn't want ring as your tag you wouldn't want a single word anyway but you wouldn't want the word ring however if it is a bronze engagement ring you would still have the entire tag bronze engagement ring that's that's your superstar keyword that's exactly what it is so how i tend to look at these things is your title is your most important re real estate this is where your big keywords the ones you really want to go for have to be in your title that's the most important your tags are the next most important place so you make sure you double up what was in your title with your tags you make sure those superstar keywords are in both places and then the rest of your tags that's where you put in the extra things that or maybe not quite, they're still relevant, but you're thinking maybe I can't rank for this, but it's maybe a future tag. Maybe it's it's your thing like, um, you know, if, if Starla is the only person with skeleton key necklaces, although it will be in her title, but if she didn't have it in her title for some reason, it could be in the tag, she'll still rank for it because she's the only person with it. So it's the less important terms, the, the throwaway ones you're just testing. And then your attributes and everything, they're less important for SEO, but Etsy gives us them. Don't spend too much time worrying about them. Just put what's relevant. Yeah. And also a quick little disclaimer um, that I, I try to point out a lot is that if you create an item around Christmas time, but that item is not a Christmas item, it doesn't have a reindeer or Santa Claus on it, do not select Christmas as the occasion for the, or for the holiday as that, you know, 
attribute. Um, because what they want is the, those attributes to describe the product, not a time when it would be good to market it. So just make sure that you're filling out the attributes accurately and don't feel bad about leaving some of them blank if they don't apply to you. It would be better to just leave them blank because somebody who is specifically searching for a Christmas mug with a Santa Claus on it probably isn't going to be the market for your mug with, I don't know, live, laugh, love printed on it, you know? So, um, Elena said if Agneta uses, uh, team wire and helps her friend through this, that's a remote desktop, uh, access tool. And mm. I, I would, I would, I, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know, Etsy, how a remote desktop tool would be interpreted by Etsy. I don't know how the IP would would come across. So that sounds like a Etsy support question because we'd hate to be like, yeah, that's a great idea. And then get your Etsy shop shut down. So, yeah. And kind of if you're not 100 percent sure you trust your friend not to get their shop shut down, uh, using a remote desktop on their computer. I would have to trust someone a lot more to <laughs> to do things like that, I think. But de yeah. yeah, check check with Etsy. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure I, I trust anyone enough to do that with my computer. Yeah. Ooh, I read that you should email integrity at Etsy.com to let them know about any virtual assistance as well. You need to list them as members of your shop too. Transparency is key. Yes. Uh, that is one thing that if you are helping somebody with their shop, you do have to, uh, it has to be stated in the shop that they are a helper for your shop. And I think that, does it have to be in all the listings as well? I know it has to be in your shop members or well, is that just production partners that I have think to it's, yeah i think it's production partners but check yeah i i think team members are just in your shop um but yeah um see if you're going to do something like this email etsy and make sure you're right with it before you before you do it because it would be horrible to get your shop shut down just from trying to help out a friend yeah <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a big kick in the pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Elena said, how many days after putting new keywords in a listing should we put them in the monitor tool? I, that really depends on what plan tier you have, because if you've got a free plan, you only get to monitor one term. And I'm going to make sure that that one term I'm monitoring is my very, very best term that I want to rank for for infinity and beyond. <laughs> Pam, what, what do you think? Uh, yeah, if you've only got one, then you can only use one. But if you're if you're starting a new campaign, you're aiming for some new keywords. Day one, before day T minus one, get them up there straight away so you can see how you're doing with your new items. And um, that's that's the whole point. You're monitoring. I mean, don't if you have one of the subscriptions and you can have more than one keyword, keep your most important keywords there. But yeah, as soon as you're going, I really want to aim for the this keyword this is my this is my new important keyword absolutely i put it in straight away yeah absolutely um everybody in the chat says that they still get the star for VP <laughs> so that's good because for all of the people who use my swipe files who don't want to send the same exact copy and paste messages over and over and over to repeat customers, those were really, really important. So I was sweating a little bit. Like, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> let's see. Samantha said, Pam and Starla adding things to the list. Anthony sweating in a corner <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> It's not, it's actually not Anthony. It's our poor development team that, that are sweating where they're just like, oh no, not another thing. <laughs> we have a big team. Uh, I don't think that people realize that. Yeah, I know Anthony's, he's hired some really incredible people, which now just means that he sits cackling in the corner going, you, you elf, go and fix this thing. <laughs> <Don't be afraid." laughs> Yeah, and the, the ones that you see on, on the banner up above, those are just like the public, the public E-Rank members. Those are our actual team members on that banner at the top of the group. But that is not all of our team members. 
that does not include, it only includes one of the two of the developers because Randy and Tanya are on there, but none of the other developers yeah. are on there. <laughs> oh, we love our developers though. I, I don't know if any of them are even in this group, but we love you guys. <laughs> oh, exactly. Yeah, we we need to to set on getting the whole the whole team in a massive bunch photo at one point. Yes. Surprise. Surprise me. <laughs> what a team we've got. See. Amber said, the majority of my tags have unknown data, yet I'm having no problem selling my items. Is there any way to filter out the unknown data? There's like three pages of it to get to the top performing tags, according to E-Rank. Um, I'm assuming that that unknown data is associated to very specific dog breeds and things because uh, Amber creates pet portraits. And, you know, I don't know how many people are specifically searching for things like Rhodesian Ridgeback and, and very specific breeds that aren't like popular like corgis and chihuahuas and shiba inus are so um there's no way to filter it out though right i don't know you can if you click on the top of that column it should list the columns by you know top down for the most the most competition or the most searches or things so you can do that um but but yeah we can't <laughs> we, we can't at the minute in time, we can't totally filter out everything with unknown data, but if you click on the column, you can like send it to the bottom and see the other stuff. Yeah, and un for those who don't know, unknown data doesn't mean that those products aren't being searched. It's just, we just don't have data on those products. And the when we get a niche that's really, really, really obscure, it's just one of those things that, that slip past the radar. Because ultimately, the data that we have is real shopper data collected from a panel of individuals, a lot of individuals. But if nobody from that panel of individuals has a Rhodesian Ridgeback and none of them are going to search that term enough to create a significant wave in the data, then we're going to say that that data is unknown just because it's very niche. Uh, and I would, I would really try to maybe stick some of those unknown terms in your listings and test them because just seeing that, you know, we don't have data on it and it's a little bit of a hush hush term, Maybe that's like a little gap in the market where not a lot of people are making that product. And maybe maybe you've discovered a dog breed that, you know, everybody wants a product for, but nobody is making a product for it. So. Oh, definitely with dog breeds. Try, try ever. I did. I ran out ran out of motivation but i was at one time trying to put every single dog breed into some of my listings um because yeah if if you can do that sort of easily and and cheaply it's 20 cents to add a listing and yeah if one person searches for that every month and i'm the only person selling something like that then that's still an extra sale every month and if i did that with a hundred different dog breeds i'm kind of laughing so. yeah Absolutely. Test, 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 guys, because there might be golden nuggets that, that you know, I mean, if we don't have the data, then that's a pretty good sign that none of your competitors are getting the data. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Amber said, uh, sales rank in the UK, everyone who has made 66,000 sales right up to 140,000 sales are rank two. Is this rank really that broad? Um, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Um, there's it, when there's a large number of people having sold things to break it into a hundred percent. Each percentile will be quite large. Um, but I think Anthony did say he was going to um, re make sure that data is up to date um, because obviously, like every day, new sellers come in and new sellers leave. So we can't. We, it's not updated to the minute. It's updated every now and again. So we'll make sure. But but yes, um, there is that many <laughs> that many sellers in the UK. Absolutely. All right, we've got one more from Linda. I have a bestseller that I just renew all the data and included new photos as there are some differences. So she went in and made some updates and maybe added some new keywords. Uh, do renewals have the same attention by Etsy as a new listing? I try to list one thing a day to stay in Etsy's bot loop. Bot loop. <laughs> 
trying to stay in, in Etsy's radar, being an active, an active seller. Um, the thing about renewals is that that listing still has history, which is different than a fresh listing. Uh, any engagement, any past sales, anybody who's left a review on that listing in the past. And, and this, we're not talking about copying a listing because that's a, a new listing in the eyes of Etsy. But renewing a listing, even if you change everything, you change the title, you take all new photos, you change your tags, you write a totally new description. Um, as long as the product is the same, I would say that that would probably be the best way to go before creating a new listing from scratch to see if you can kind of resurrect it because I wouldn't want to get rid of any of that positive history that the listing might have had in the past. Yeah, and it won't have any neg if you've changed everything. It doesn't have any negative associations for the keywords that didn't work in the past because they're not there anymore. Um, so they totally renewals, Etsy tells us they get that small boost in search when you renew them because it's trying to learn again what you've done that's different. Um, they do tell us don't re use renewing like 40 times a day as a strategy. But if you're doing different things, absolutely, it's a good way. And I did actually test this and making a brand new listing and just publishing it for an item that I could rank for. Um, I ended up at the exact same place as when I shut everything down and then renewed a listing with the same keywords. I ended up at the exact same place. So if there's a difference in how much of that boost for, for renewal you get is very, very small. So as Starla says, you've got all the positive attention. You could have links from social media. Um, not many people get seen from Google, but at least Google, if it's been around for your six months or so, Google's aware that that exists. So sometimes there is a bonus to having older things, keeping older things rather than throwing them all out. And I've, I've, I've dug up the dead. I've revived some zombies for sure. Some, some listings that were doing nothing for years. And I made a couple of changes and suddenly they just took off. Yeah. Uh, and I, I experienced the same thing uh, with a listing that had never sold before and did a little keyword refresh on it. It had been sitting around for several years um, and it completely, you know, bounced back. So it's possible. Um, I would just try it out. And if you try and try and try and you still don't see any results from it, then maybe create a new listing and try to identify what you were doing wrong. Cause it ultimately, if you just copy the listing again and make a brand new fresh listing, but it's still got the same, crappy title and the same boring description and the same ugly photos and the same awful tags, then it's going to still be the same result. You've got to make those changes. So, all right. Um, we are down to, let's see, we're down to the last six minutes. So we'll get Angela's question in and then we'll do a quick recap of all the fun things that Anthony asked us to share with you. And then we will share our YouTube links and then we will let poor Debbie rest her fingers because she's <laughs> typing notes for you guys. Um, let's see. Angela said, would you advise adding pictures that show the size of your item, not through putting it next to another item uh, for size or holding it, but by adding the size on top of the actual image, such as uh, 24 centimeters? I'm asking because not every customer seems to read descriptions and perhaps adding an image with shipping times, et cetera, as well. The, this is what I do. This is what I have advised since day one before Etsy started kind of hiding our descriptions. Because even when descriptions weren't hidden where you have to click like show more to read the whole thing, people still didn't read the descriptions. So anything that you need your customers to know about your products should be in your photos and you've got 10 photo slots. So there's no excuse not to be able to get those in there because I know that most of you probably don't use all 10 of them. Um, I, I know that I struggle to use all 10 of them. So what I recommend, um, I'm hijacking this question, Pam, but I'm feeling <laughs> ranty on this one. I recommend using two units of measure. First unit of measure, use something precise. You could put the size on it, like you said, in, in centimeters. Um, if you're bringing me food, don't worry about it because I'm about to come upstairs. 
<laughs> Use a precise unit of measure. I also recommend laying your product next to a ruler or what whatever you know unit of measure you're using, depending on the size. Lay it next to that that ruler or whatever, and then use an imprecise unit of measure. Do one with a ruler and then put another one next to a coin or a pop can or your hand or something that is more tangible to that buyer because you could put ex the exact size of that product. You could put the exact number of in inches of that product. But if you're taught, if you're working with a customer who doesn't have an accurate frame of what three inches looks like, and they're not able to tangibly imagine that in their head, you could still end up with that person who says, oh, this is smaller than I expected. And it's like, hello, the size was right here the whole time. How did you not notice it? Um, so the two units of measure are just an extra layer of like security there. And then the final photo that I recommend having on all of your listings is a little short, clean, bulleted list of the important things that they need to know. Put on there your processing times. Uh, if you've got some care instructions for your product that that customer needs to know before they buy, like, you know, I, I don't know, maybe it absolutely can't be washed like those. I know that there's a lot of talk about those chunky knit blankets. Uh, people saying don't buy those anymore because you can't wash them or something I like that. No, because they're rubbish. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I know the things you mean and they're, they're knitted with rope. They're knitted with the stuff I felt with. That's not designed to make a blanket out of. <laughs> <laughs> but like th th that is information. Like if it can't be washed or, you know, whatever your customer needs to know, if, if it takes you six weeks to make it and then it's going to take another two weeks to get to them, you need to make sure that you put, hey, you're not going to get this product for eight weeks. Do you still want it? All of that information should be put in a nice little clean list at the end of your listing. That way, if they you know, don't read your descriptions, if they don't read anything in your shop, they don't go to your about section and they don't read your shop announcement to read those really important details, they're still going to see them because I know that if I'm buying something, I'm at least going to look at all the pictures of it. Right. So um, that's what I personally recommend. Absolutely. A um, couple of quick things. If you're selling internationally, think about international sizes as well. Yes. Um, centimeters and inches, but also things like shoes and clothes are d very different sizes in different countries so cover that um and baby clothes they're described differently in different countries um and the other thing you can do depending on what your item is that lifestyle photo can be super important like if it's an ornament show it on a shelf next to other similar ornaments so they get an idea like that really shows the size but customers they don't read the description they don't read anything I literally I have a I have a bookmark that's my bestseller and it's a picture of a bookmark in a book that, that I couldn't get more specific than that a paperback book that's a generic size across the whole world I've had a comment saying bigger than expected and a comment saying smaller than expected <laughs> it's a book <laughs> what <laughs> so yeah it doesn't matter what you do there's always going to be a customer <laughs> like that but you do the best you can absolutely yeah all right guys so thanks for hanging out first of all thank you for your questions if you joined us on youtube make sure that you check for the link down below so you can join the e-write group and join us next week i'm going to be throwing in some links for everybody first we have the e-rank youtube channel where you'll soon be able to watch the replay of this live stream as well as lots of other uh awesome videos related to our tools and fun things so uh next channel we have pam are you streaming on sunday pam i'm streaming on sunday yes um it's either gonna we're either gonna be making a puffin or a cat on sunday i'm not sure not <laughs> funny well you've already got a chicky so i guess that's <laughs> i have i have a bunny um no, the, there will be an avalanche of dragons if I fetch the bunny. <laughs> we, we, we did a bunny last year. 
Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that, that's that's too cliche. You gotta you gotta step outside the box. Like the festive Easter rat, you need to make a festive Easter puffin. Absolutely, <laughs> it's a well known Easter thing in Scotland. Honestly, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, of course, everybody knows about the festive Easter puffin. <laughs> 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 and then, uh, and then on Friday tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. Uh, yeah. I don't know where I am anymore. My kid's spring break was last week and it's got me so messed up. On Friday, which is tomorrow, I will be streaming live for the Friday Bean at noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Pacific time on my channel. And we are going to be talking about why Etsy sales are so slow right now and what to expect from the next few months. So that will be live and at the end you can ask us some questions as well. And, uh, oh, wait, oh, Anthony, Anth I forgot the more important stuff, stuff that Anthony wanted us to mention. <laughs> Anthony would like us to remind you guys that if you are noticing that your E-Rank is outdated, click the orange refresh data button. It's up at the top right-hand corner. Um, a lot of the times we have E-Rank users who will message us and say things like, hey, I added a new listing and E-Rank says that I didn't. And we say, hey, go refresh your data. And they just click the refresh button on their browser. That's not what we mean. You need to click the refresh data button. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to pull that new data and those changes from your shop. Unfortunately, that's not something that we can just do constantly because it would take E-Rank forever to load. And we already know that some of the tools load a little bit slower than others. So hitting that refresh date and data, data button is going to ensure that you're actually sending us the most recent information about your Etsy shop. Um, and, and then the last little bits are that the March data is going to be available by Tuesday. So maybe set a little reminder on your Google Calendar to go in and check the trend buzz on Tuesday or double check your keyword lists and make sure that none of your your keywords are falling out of trend. And then next month, we'll be upgrading the keyword tool and the trend buzz report and switching them to rapid updates, which will mean that the data will be updated on the first of the new month. So we're gonna be getting the data a little bit faster. Exciting. Yeah. That was a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> it was, oh, well done. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. Have a super duper happy and safe Easter. And uh, we'll see you next week. Yeah. Happy Easter, guys. Bye, guys.